Hi, I'm Jason Bryan from the Short Time Wrestling Podcast and founder of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned and operated, and those opinions presented and expressed may not reflect others, the sponsors, patrons, or the parent network. Find more shows about the greatest sport in the world at the Matt Talk Podcast Network at matttalkonline.com. It's time for Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling. We'll talk all things hokey wrestling with Coach Tony Roby and staff. Now, let's join your host, Hall of Fame wrestling writer and broadcaster, Jason Bryant. Episode 102 of Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling. Back from his long Thanksgiving Day siesta is Coach Tony Roby. We talked to him right around Thanksgiving. And, uh, man, you must have eaten a ton of turkey. I mean, it's been it's been four months since you've showed up on your own show, man. I mean, you, you wake up, you win, you know, nine duels, you win the ACC title. That was That's, that's, that's a pretty good post-Thanksgiving nap there, Coach. I know. I might have to start doing it every year, right? <laughs> Result, results have been pretty good. So, um, but, no, it's good to be back on with you, Jason. We Obviously, it's a different year, and um, there's a lot of things that uh, we have, as coaches and um, our athletes have had to deal with that are uh, first-time things for us. So, you know, we've been, we've been spending a lot of time navigating that and just trying to keep our head down and focus on the task at hand, um, you know. So that's kind of our, been our mentality for the last year, really, so, um, you know, that's kind of where we're at and what we've been doing. And uh, But it's great to be back on. It's great to, uh, you know, communicate again with our with our fan base. We've missed them this year in Castle Coliseum. Uh, obviously, we've had some great dual meets and uh, some exciting dual meets. Uh, we wish they could have been uh, present for those. It would have made it even that much more special. But fortunately, the ACC network exists, and uh, they've been able to watch us either online or on TV. So uh, I hope they've enjoyed that part. Yeah, it's definitely been creative. I know that uh, me and some media types were sitting here. I had uh, the dual screen. I had the the uh, the Pitt Virginia Tech match up on one screen. I had Ohio State Michigan up on the other. So it was a great. I mean, I was just I finally got the speakeasy for its intended purpose to watch wrestling and talk wrestling in a space that doesn't have to worry about Barbie dolls and My Little Pony. So uh, I appreciate the ACC Network for that for giving me a good Friday nights last couple Friday nights of wrestling. It's been it's been great from from even those that that don't live in the in the region. No, I think the response has been uh, fantastic. That uh, that I know at least what I've gotten from from people that are obviously Virginia Tech fans, but a lot of non-Virginia Tech fans too that are able to tune in, watch that. We you know we talked about it when it happened, and it being a game changer for for our conference and for wrestling in the ACC and just wrestling in general. Uh, I think wrestling is a great TV product too, um, and you know we've it just the, the matches in Castle have been fantastic. We've been, we've been fortunate over the last uh, two years to be a part of some really exciting dual meets. Fortunately this year, we came out on the right side of those ones. Um, but yeah, definitely a game changer. And I think it's going to, you know, continue to grow our sport and, and grow wrestling in, in our conference and at Virginia tech. One thing that some Hokie fans, of course, I've noticed this as well. And actually I think fans around the country, including the guys at stalemates, the new mat this year, what went into the idea of going with the, uh, the octagonal mat? Uh, you, well, I'd like to take credit for it, but as you know, Arkansas Little Rock, uh, I think was the first ones to do it. And, you know, it's kind of a UFC playoff, the UFC and, and the octagon. And, um, that, that's, you know, the whole idea behind it, I guess. Uh, I, I think it's pretty cool. We like it. I think it looks good on TV. I know our guys like it and, um, you know, it doesn't really affect anything else other than then it's a, a, a pretty neat marketing thing in my opinion yeah the optics on it look good and a lot of people don't realize is that the mats at the olympics uh are different from the mats at the world championships but there's always been kind of an octagonal or a a more um i guess polyagonal poly, is that the word i don't know i spent seven years in, in college i don't really know math and you know it's always yeah. had these weird dimensions to it that you know the for optics the olympics jump in on that and then of course the, the ufc and yeah my friends down at little rock broke it out last year i'm like okay that might be a game changer and here comes the Hokies. that's that's another game it looks sharp i like that maroon and orange uh color scheme right there it's 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 super it, it just pops the mat out so it was definitely for television i think it looks great too 
Yeah, I know our, I, I, the response has been pretty good. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're still, it doesn't really matter where you're wrestling or what the shape is. It's still wrestling, and you got to go out there and you got to compete. Yeah, it's kind of like having an ugly singlet or a cool singlet. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day, but it's still, it, it, it's optics. Yeah, the fans like it, so I guess that's a good, that's a real positive. What, what's the response been from the cardboard cutouts? Have they been loud in Castle, or has it just been kind of, uh, uh, anyway, stupid question. Let's keep moving on, because uh, uh, dad jokes are bad jokes. Anyway, coming in, since we had Jared Freyer on, he talked about the extra matches and, and the, the basically this being a free year. And what we've seen from your lineup this season is if you've been plugging guys in and out of the starting lineup at different weights, giving guys a break here and there, or, you know, what has it been like for you as a coach to actually have these options, not have to worry about burning a true freshman's red shirt? And now that you've put it into practice, especially down the line, the last five dual meets, what are some things that you, you think are good out of this situation that maybe we can keep in college wrestling moving forward? I love it. It's uh, for us. It's just it, you have so many more options, um, and, and it allows you to uh, put competitive teams out there all the time. I mean, I think last year was a perfect example of a year that uh, we knew we had some talent that was redshirting um, and that was in our wrestling room that wasn't in wrestling in Virginia Tech singlets. And uh, this year, uh, being having the flexibility to – uh, test the waters with some young guys um, to, to throw guys out in competitive environments and, and help you determine what your lineup is going to look like too, at the end of the year. So we can wrestle offs are one thing and what you see in the room is one thing, but you know, there's so many variables that you can't simulate in the wrestling room in a wrestle off situation that allows you as a coach to evaluate and determine um, you know, which guy is going to compete the best for you when it matters the most and when pressure's on and when things get hard and when maybe they have to go back to back to back matches or whatever it might be. So I, I love that part of it. I, um, you know, I've said this several times. I, I, I wish they would change it permanently and just give guys five years to compete and have no red shirt year. Um, you know, I think if you look at it from an athletic department scholarship or from an athletic department standpoint, uh, we, you know, we've got a lot of scholarship money invested into these guys and um, some, you know, the red shirt thing, I get it from the development standpoint. And, and if, if, if it goes back to the way it was, we'll certainly, con- you know, continue to, to red shirt guys where it's appropriate, but uh, they get a lot more development by, by being able to compete for your team, whether they end up competing at the end of the year or they don't. It allows guys to, to stay engaged and to be engaged and to travel with the team. Um, so there's just so many advantages. I mean, it allows us to evaluate somebody like Clayton Ory and work with him more um, because he's wrestling extra matches every time we compete. And he gets more coaching because of it. He develops better because of it. Um, and he's going to be a lot better off when he does get the opportunity as a starter uh, because of w- what went on this year. So I, I, I love it. It helps us, I think. Um, like you said, it allows you to rest guys that are banged up a little bit um, and, and really put your best team out on the mat um, every, each and every time you compete. And one thing it also does is is you've been able to bring more. I know, I think Stanford, they were on that, that two-week road trip. They brought 23 guys. <laughs> and they brought all, I mean, granted, their situation is a little different, but they brought 23 guys on the road with them. And every every non-Pac-12 duel, they were getting those guys extra matches. And it was it was crazy. So uh, we're seeing different schools apply different uh, logic to it. And, and a lot of them just take it as many, you know, oh, we're allowed to take this many? Well, we're going to take every single person. And one thing also that it gets you those extra matches, it sa- might save the kids some money on these open tournaments because they've got to pretty much pay out of their own pocket in a lot of ways. And then you're, 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 you're keeping your, your college freshmen from driving a truckload of their teammates somewhere. And then there's a safety impact there. One less thing to worry about. It, I, I really hope the NCAA takes a look at it. I think, I think every coach that you would talk to across the country would agree that it's, it's been a, it's been a good thing. Um, you know, and, and just even, you know, even from a, a financial standpoint, you know, for Virginia Tech's paying a kid a full scholarship, which out of state, which is $47,000, um, makes sense for that kid to be wrestling and, and, and wrestling in a Virginia Tech singlet, you know, as many times as possible. And if we're going to pay that scholarship five years in a row, uh, makes sense for the guy to be able to, to compete for us for five years too. And that's what the fans want. You know, uh, I, 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 the kids want it. And I know that there's, um, there's some historical uh, stuff 
uh, that, you know, we, you'd have to accept the changes to it. But, uh, man, it's, it just uh, it makes more sense to me. And it could actually put more uh, more emphasis on the dual meet attendance because not only are you just seeing the 10 bouts, you might get 15 total bouts. Or Navy, for example, they had 20-some extra bouts because their school only allows them to compete against one opponent at a time. So as large as those uh, service academy rosters are, there's there's the 10 duels, in some cases, 20 extra bouts. So when we get fans back in there, there's more bang for the buck there, too, seeing your guys. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, like I said, I, I don't, I don't see a lot of negatives um, with it. So uh, it may be one of those things where, um, you know, it, it turns into it was a, it was a short term solution that turns into something that we continue to do long term, and and that is a, uh, it's just a, a win for everybody. Tell you what, I know that the New England colleges have, have done it for quite a while in Division Three. They even have like futures tournaments, but that's another that's another thing that I would love to get into later, but not right now because we've got. Hokey victories to talk about. We'll go back to the University of Virginia, the Commonwealth Clash, 1915, a 5-5 split. Bonus points by Sam Latona, Corbin Myers, and Bryce Andonian were the difference there. And uh, I want to focus in on one bout here with, with Corbin Myers just absolutely taking Louis Hayes to the woodshed. 12-1 to major decision over a guy that's been there at the tournament multiple times. You know, Corbin, kind of a, a mystery to a lot of people because he's battled so many injuries. You know, the talent was there, but this is one that, you know, over the course of the next couple of weeks, this is like, wait a minute, he's on fire. So uh, what, what's it like to see Corbin get such a big win like that? Just really happy for Corbin. Um, he's had a lot of adversity since he came to Virginia Tech, has never really been completely healthy, uh, made a decision last year, and it was a tough decision to to get surgery. And... Um, and there was some risk involved with the surgery that, that he got. But uh, I think we made, you know, obviously we made the right call. There was a couple different options that he could have, avenues that he could have went um, in terms of how we wanted to proceed medically. And I think we made the right decision. And uh, it's, it's, been, it's been awesome to see Corbin, you know, kind of find his groove a little bit and, and wrestle at the level that he's wrestling at. I mean, he's always been incredibly capable, but he's, he's definitely figured things out um from a you know just from a competition standpoint and from a wrestling standpoint and from a confidence standpoint and uh you know we knew that he had a chance to be really really good and uh he's you know quite honestly he's probably exceeded things but we we still have a lot of work to do too you know i mean it's we this thing's by far it's far from over for corbin myers i think he's got the potential i know he's got the potential to really you know uh, even even do better things than maybe people even anticipate at the ncaa tournament so uh he needs to keep doing what he's doing focusing on um the things that he's been focusing on and and uh you know stay keep his process exactly the same and how he's approaching things mentally and physically but uh yeah he's he really has been wrestling at a high level and beating some quality not just beating quality guys but but going out and putting up a ton of points and uh score you know scoring late in matches and just dominating that's what you want to see you want to see guys that have the ability to dominate dominate and uh corbin has definitely turned the corner there we moved to the win over duke which again as we know uh, doesn't have scholarships come you know some years better than others for for the for the Blue Devils but 42 to 3 and this one is kind of the the topic we were talking about beforehand getting your your non-starters or or those that are battling for spots an opportunity for division 1 mat time we saw a lot of a lot of a, a different real lineup here with with Virginia Tech and what are the benefits of of having that type of win with a lot of new faces in that lineup yeah it, it made sense and we had back to back matches we had UNC the next day so it made sense for us to um to to give some other guys opportunities to compete and and rest some guys and make sure they felt great on Saturday and that's you know that was played into our thought process for sure is to to allow guys to you know Joey Prada and Colin Girardi and Sam Fisher uh, you know those guys to go out there and wrestle in in a, a match that matters and uh, then also at the same time. Um, give some guys the, the you know only may have them make weight once that weekend so it, it worked out well for us I think it was the right strategy when you look at uh, look at the results and uh, but you know it, it was good and uh, you know we turned around the next day against UNC and, and I thought we wrestled pretty good yeah 23 to 9 over the heels which uh, came in ranked number 14 a top 15 matchup between schools in the ACC Again, Corbin Myers blitzes a nationally ranked guy. Majors Jamie Hernandez, excuse me, Jaime Hernandez. I always butcher that. And then we we look at some of the matchups. Makai Lewis uh, gets pushed to the edge there. 
takes the win over Kennedy Monday. But Dakota Howard, Dakota Howard knocking off number nine, Devin Kane, eight to seven. That was one that I circled on this entire thing going, wow, that's that's a significant win for a guy like Dakota Howard. Yeah, and if I think if you watched Cody Russell um, all year, you wouldn't. It wasn't shocking. Um, he was right there against UVA, against Marcinelli, and uh, he's he's had some tight bouts. I mean, he had Kent State. He wrestled the number eight or nine ranked guy in the country and was in the match late. So I think I think Cody continues to improve uh, and evolve with his wrestling as as things move along here. So he's. Uh, I wasn't shocked, and, and if Cody can stay in the match and it's close late, he always has a chance to win. There's no doubt about it. I mean, he, we love love the energy that he brings and the effort that he brings every time he steps on the mat. Um, you know, I mean, he's never he's never going to lose because of lack of effort. Um, I, I know that much, and, and he's always going to uh, go out there and he's going to compete hard and he's going to represent our team and, and uh, wrestle the way that we, we ask our guys to wrestle. So it was a great win for him. I was happy to see, see him kind of, you know, um, punch through, I think it might've been his first win of the year. Um, and then he, you know, he's been wrestling well ever since. And just to avoid confusion, you, you, you're you saying Cody, the roster says Dakota. Which one does, obviously, it looks like he prefers Cody, but for those who are Hokey fans or those who may be coming in is like, wait, Dakota Howard, Cody Howard, ex- explain the name preference for him. Um, I, I, You know, I, I don't know what he prefers to be called. I call him C- Cody. That's what I called him in the recruiting process, and he never he never corrected me. So uh, his real name is Dakota. Obviously, Cody is short for Dakota. Um, just like Tony is short for Anthony, and I think that's kind of the way it goes. All right. You know, I've never heard the Cody short for Dakota thing, but now that you mention it, yeah, I guess that does make a little bit of sense. Now, also in this duel, something that a lot of Hokie fans that were really, uh, they were chattering about Sam Hilligus here, even though he lost in sudden victory, takes a top 10 opponent in to extra time. I mean, talk about the development of Sam Hilligus in this in, in this wrestling room. He's... Uh... He's an incredibly talented, incredibly talented guy. And, um, you know, he went out there and was really aggressive against Sherman. Uh, got scored a takedown early, which he's capable of doing against anybody. Uh, you know, got a leg in. And, and then when he, when he gets a leg in on you and he gets on top, he is a dangerous, dangerous guy. And um, he, you know, I felt like he, he really had a lot of opportunities to win that match. If I remember correctly, he gave up two reversals at the end of the periods and um, just, you know, did, didn't finish the way that uh, he needed to, to, to win that. And he, he was right there. I mean, he was in on the leg late, close to scoring a takedown. Um, you know, it would have been a, it would have been a huge win for him without question. Um, you know, but he, he's a capable guy. I mean, he, I think when, when I look at Sam Hilligus, uh, to me, that's, that's the match that we expect him to go out there and win. And, um, you know, that's kind of how we view Sam Hillegas and how good we think he is. So uh, it's great. You know, I mean, I, I guess it's great that you lose close. But in my opinion, he's capable of winning. We expect him to win that match. And that's kind of where where the expectation needs to be with Sam, regardless of how old he is. I know he's a true freshman, but um, he's still he's still uh, he's got the ability to, to uh, be a top 10 guy, top eight guy in the country this year. So um, that's kind of, you know, where he's at and what we expect from him. I like to talk about intangibles a little bit, X factors, things that aren't necessarily with the technical aspect of the sport. And how much of the of the Carolina rivalry that's developing here, it makes it a grudge match. Coleman Scott, really fiery. His staff, really fiery. Your staff, really fiery. I mean, how much when you see Carolina on the schedule now, also given the past results, you're, you're circling it like we are this. This is not just another wrestling duel meet. Well, I, I don't, you know, I have a really good relationship with Coleman and Ramos, and I like those guys a lot, and I think, you know, respect what they're doing down there. So um, I, I don't know if there's a lot from that end, but, you know, the fact that they beat us the last two years uh, was was definitely something that was, uh, I think, bothered us as a staff and bothered our guys, um, certainly bothered our fans, you know, especially the way that we lost last year to them on national TV. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was, it was something that was important uh, for us to, to get a W. They're all important. Um, there's, there's no doubt, but I, th- I think more than anything, just the fact that 
uh, we didn't perform well the last two years when we wrestled those guys, and they did. I mean, they performed well, credit to them. And, and uh, so it, it meant a lot for us to go out there and, and compete hard. And to, um, I think our guys were fired up for it. You know, they had a little more motivation. You don't need a whole lot of motivation now when, when you wrestle NC State, a top 10 matchup, winning this one on criteria, most total match points. And I, I, if there's a lesson before we get to the individual matchups here about the win over NC State, is wrestle till you hear the whistle. And, you know, Rock Harrison went bonkers on ACC Network, Sam Latona with two and two at the buzzer, not only to win the, the match, but send it to criteria, but ultimately it was the match, those last two near fall points were the difference in criteria. Have you ever in your career been around something as wild like that in a dual meet finish? No, I don't, I, I don't think I have, but I mean, we've, we've, uh, two years ago, we lost NC state on criteria and Cornell on criteria, but it certainly didn't play out the way, uh, it played out, um, in castle a couple weeks ago at the end there. Um, it was, it was pretty wild and to, you know, to need, I, I was actually kind of hoping it was going to go into overtime um, and we could score a takedown in overtime. And, and then we would have, I think we would have tied, but would have won on the next criteria, which was most takedowns, I believe. Um, so to score the takedown and then to get the back points um, with seconds left on the clock, almost no time left on the clock really um, was pretty, pretty, you're, you're not going to watch a, a more exciting wrestling match than than you saw there and uh you know thank god they put they, they actually didn't have that scheduled to be on acc network originally and our uh brandon neff um who works with wrestling from the acc office was able to get that done so kudos to him to allow everybody across the country uh that's a wrestling fan to to be able to see that i don't think there was a lot going on at eight o'clock on a friday night um so it, it worked out great and it was it was obviously incredible incredible finish to the match um great match you know they, they we we always have great matches with those guys so uh no to answer your question I, i've never been a part of anything quite that crazy uh where it you know where you win the match at the end individually uh, ties the dual meet and then you win on criteria all in the last five seconds of the match yeah, it, it, you're doing the math, and I want to give Damien Salas from the, uh, the athletics department a, a shout out here. It, because of that dual meet, he has created a, a basically a PDF for those to track criteria, not just fans, SIDs, broadcasters. But I'm like, okay, I was like, man, okay, HokieSports.com really doing it up there. And of course, uh, shout out Pocos in Virginia, where Damien and I went to high school together. But anyway, uh, getting to the 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 match itself, Corbin Myers, another major over another top fifteen guy. We, we had majors there, but we also had the majors. Daniel Bullard uh, beat the aforementioned Cody Howard at 174. Hunter Boland and Trent Hiley, these are not the most thrilling matches, but very workmanlike. And, and what is it about Hunter Boland that gives him the edge over Hiley in these tight matches right now? I think Hunter does a great job keeping his composure, keeping his focus, um, you know, never, never panics. Um, and he's just got, he's got a lot of grit, you know, I mean, finding ways, you know, Trent Hadley is obviously very, very good. And, and all of those matches have been very close. So, um, to, you know, to be able to, to come out on top each time, uh, is a credit to, to Hunter's just his desire and his will to win and his toughness. And, and, uh, you know, I talk about that all the time with Hunter. I mean, he's just a tough guy and his, uh, you know, he's got, uh, it's, it's not always pretty, right. But man, that guy is, uh, he's a competitor and, uh, he's just, he's, he's got a lot, he's got a big heart and that's, that's what it comes down to a lot of times. Also of note, every single wrestler who won a match in this duel meet is ranked in the top 20, 15 out of 20 that competed in this duel were ranked in the top 20. And, and, you know, years ago when you came to Blacksburg, the ACC didn't quite look like that. So again, we're, we're focusing on, you know, what the ACC network did. You know, they, they put this on Friday night, but they also had a reason to put it on. Again, 15 out of 20 ranked in the top 20. That that used to not be the case for the ACC. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even close, right? I mean, it, it's just changed so much in every single area from how many fans are watching, uh, how many ranked guys are wrestling, the quality of the wrestling, um, the implications that it has on on the national uh, wrestling scene. Um, I think the eyeballs that were on it, you know, um, it was, you know, the, I got so many text messages after, after the match, it couldn't even answer them all. So there's a lot of people that are tuning in and it's a, it's a credit to a lot of people that have helped get this thing in our conference and at these programs to where they're at. Um, so yeah, it's, been, it's definitely been a process. It's been 
for me, it's been awesome to be a part of um, the, the the build and uh, climbing the mountain, so to speak. So it's it's a lot more fun. But we got more work to do. You know, we're not we're not where we need to be yet. I don't think anybody in the ACC would tell you they're where they want to be uh, right now. Did wake you up from your podcast nap as you text me on 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 the next day? It's like, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready to do a podcast now. So uh, going into pit nationally ranked, pit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to make sure the whole the, the whole thing was done. Yeah, then we go to the pit. We're like, all right, let's just do it after pit. And then, you know, there it is, ACC championship, twenty seven to twelve. Of course, the first thing people are going to want to know about this is the status of Mikhail Lewis. Number one loses by injury default, visibly uh, hurt there early in the match. Tried to gut it out, and then ultimately the towel was thrown in here. So uh, that's the first question people want to know: Mikhail Lewis, what's the status? As of right now, when we're recording this podcast, I've got no more information than I did on Friday. He had an MRI uh, this morning. I anticipate having more information in the next couple hours um, in terms of how serious and how significant the injury is. Obviously, it you know it appeared to be very serious, um, but we don't want to overreact. We don't know. You know, we're not gonna we're not gonna uh, put the cart in front of the horse, right? So we need to we need to make sure that we know what's going on, and then we can we can make decisions and um, move forward based on the information that we get from from the MRI and from our doctors and, and develop a game plan. And hopefully, it's not as serious as, as it appeared to be. Um, that's that's all I can really say. And then you got you, you win seven out of ten here, and you you take the default out. I mean, the score twenty seven twelve. It was there's quite the spread, and and you know that was it was. That close, you, you won the close matches, but you also had some big wins there. And again, going back to 133, Joey Pratt in the lineup. Again, the flexibility of having the season being the way it is. Nice little bonus points to have when you have a guy like uh, Joey Pratt. It's like, hey, yeah, we could we could bump you up a weight and and goes out and wins. Absolutely. You know, we and Corbin was going to wrestle, um, and we found out Filippi wasn't wrestling, so we, we wanted to wrestle Corbin. Um, you know, and uh, is Joey was wrestling the same guy that he wrestled last year, 125, in, in the pit duel meet, Lewis Newell, who he beat twice. So it wasn't uh, – those guys are real familiar with each other. I was happy for Joey to get an opportunity to go out there. And, you know, he's he's done a lot for our program. He's a great teammate, team member. Um, you know, he's a, he's a hokey through and through. So for him to get a chance to compete in our last duel meet of the season was, was pretty cool. And to win the way he did was uh, – I was happy for him. Being a Western PA guy, you know, we talk about maybe the grudge match. I mean, is there a little little extra chip on your shoulder for uh for getting to wrestle Pitt, or is it kind of the same thing with with Coleman and such, where you know you Keith Gavin and such, uh, uh you know, good guy overall. Yeah, Keith Gavin's a hard guy not to like, um, but no, not really. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I I haven't lived in Western PA in a long time, and um, I I don't I I think as you get older, um, you don't know, those things just it doesn't seem to be as relevant as maybe when when i was young and uh had more testosterone and was more competitive i guess <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but uh it doesn't it doesn't doesn't seem to bother me quite as much as it used to when i was a younger man and we'll get back to the extra matches here because again as far as the duel goes you know makai was was the focus point although you know guys bryce andonian with really really solid win over a pretty solid kid coming in there at mick burnett who's had pretty high accolades coming out of ohio a little Guys that know a little bit about each other, but again, these extra matches they go four out of five go go the Hokies way. So again, now that you're at the end of the dual meet season and you've seen where your guys have and coach them up, who do you think has really benefited the most from getting this travel and these extra matches here? Uh, you did mention Ulrey, but uh, anybody that that stands out, be like, yeah, okay, this this really worked for this guy. Well, I think at heavyweight too, with with Hunter Katka having an opportunity to get to, to wrestle. I mean, obviously he wrestled in the, in the uh, dual meet against Pitt, but was able to get another extra match. So uh, for him, I think it's helped him. And for Clayton, like I said, I think I think for Clayton probably as much as anybody. Um, you know, for us to be able to just see how hard he competes and how hard he wrestles and gets us excited about the future and and gets us excited about Clayton Ulrey. So, I mean, you know, up and down the lineup, I think it's been, it's been good, but, uh, we had a lot of guys that went out and wrestled hard. Um, I thought Colin Girardi did a good job against Cole Matthews, uh, against Pitt and, you know, um, Matthews is obviously talented and a quality opponent. Um, even though we came out on the wrong end of that, I thought, and went after him and was aggressive and uh, you know Colin did a good job. Now that the dual meet season's over and, and the schedule being what it is, 
Uh, you've got two weeks off, which would have been three, but we've moved the ACC championships back into February. Uh, this maybe give us some insight on uh, what the ACC did, why why things were moved. I think we all know why, but maybe some some you know behind the scenes on how things ended up working out the way they did. You get two weeks off before the ACCs, and then an additional week off that you would normally not have between D1s uh, and, and the ACC championships. So scheduling this next month, I mean, there's 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 no mad time except the ACC championships. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's something we've kind of gotten used to, to be quite honest with you, Jason. We've been, we've been way more fortunate than a lot of schools in terms of opportunities to compete. You know, I watched Michigan and Penn State wrestle yesterday. Those teams have barely, they've hardly competed at all this year. So um, we're, we're ahead of a lot of teams. So uh, the reason we moved the ACC championships up was because, you know, if somebody at the time, and things have changed with the CDC and with a lot of things since we made that decision. But at the time, it was the thought process was if somebody uh, got contact traced out based on an opponent that they wrestled at the ACC championships, it gave them enough time to get back, um, you know, come out of that contact tracing uh, time frame and be able to compete at the NCAA tournament. So that's that was the thought process. That's why we did it. Um, I, I like. I think looking forward and looking at our training and planning that that time between the ACCs and the NCAAs, I, I like the fact that we have another week in there. That that uh, that time frame always went really fast because uh, you turn around and for us, we wrestle the ACCs on a Sunday typically. You give the guys a day or two off afterward, and you really don't hardly have any time to do much, you know, hard training or we're not training super hard this time of year, but um, the training phases are difficult because you you turn around and you start training on Tuesday. Let's say you leave for the NCAAs a a week after that. So to have that three week time period in between the ACCs and NCAAs, I think will be beneficial to us. I I, kind of like it. I don't know if we'll continue to do it in the future. Let's we'll see how it plays out. But uh, this, like we've talked about a million times this year is just so much different. It's, uh, it's it's a roll with the punches and it's a uh, it is what it is kind of year and you figure it out as a go as you go and you, you have to just uh focus on on the process of what you're doing and you can't focus on you know all this other stuff we had a speaker come in a uh, navy seal come in and talk to our team in in uh, late summer early fall um and you know he talked about living in your three-foot world is something they talk about um, in, in the, uh, in seal training and just kind of focusing on what's going on around you. So that's what we're trying to do is live in our three foot world and not allow distractions to affect us very much. Now, one thing that's going to be a distraction is now that the allocations are out and there's, there's some, uh, some discussion about what conferences earn what, and it's a different year. So everything you know about the conference allocations in the past, I guess I want to say it's 2021. So this came into effect. 2008 2009 so 12 13 years throw it out the window because this one is kind of a a meld of what we've got now versus the old historical data and long story short the acc got 33 auto bids so you got the uh the the 23 the at-large plus the 10 automatic qualifiers which is the conference champions with uh let's see it looks like uh 64 70 64 bids out there yeah so overall thoughts on uh the acc's uh, bid allocation and and where you think that that helps the Hokies, or, or is there work to be done well, I think overall, I, I don't think it was uh, trying to think of a good way to say this. Uh, I, I, I don't think that everything was taken into consideration when when they uh, made those decisions in terms of who was going to get how many qualifiers. I mean, if you look at if you just if you just apply a little bit of uh common sense to it, it it doesn't make a lot of sense what they did um and i think the acc and other conferences not just the acc but some other conferences as well came out on the short end of the stick to be quite honest with you um and some other conferences that probably way more than they deserve so um but again it is what it is right i mean we we can't control it so let's just go let's go wrestle great at the accs get as many guys the ncaa's and i think i think one thing you'll see once we get to the ncaa is there's going to be um, there's going to be not as much parity maybe uh, individually in, in the weight classes as you've seen in the past. I think there's going to be some guys there that maybe shouldn't be there. There's going to be some bi- guys at home that should have been there um, based on based on what I've seen. So maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong, but that's kind of how I feel about it. 
As far as Hokie Nation's concerned, uh, what 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 information can you give them about uh, ACC championships regarding uh, potential attendance, NCAA attendance? I mean, what do you know that you can pass off to them? Yeah, the ACC per the state of North Carolina um, is allowing us to get two family members uh, for each member of our travel party, which our travel party based on ACC rules is 17. So uh, we get 34 people. Each team gets 34 people. So do the math. Well, what is that, Jason? 34 times six. That's how many people will be in the stands. So if, you, if you're not immediate family member, and even if you are, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate because there's going to be a lot of uh, family that, that are not going to be able to attend the ACCs. And uh, that's kind of, but it, but again, you know, we don't have control over it. So um, it's going to be what it is. And uh, people can watch on TV and watch at home or watch online and, and uh, support us that way. But, yeah, attending the ACCs um, is, is not going to happen. Um, and the NCAA, is, I, you know, to be honest, Jason, I, I haven't heard. They haven't released anything. So I, I, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, um, I don't even have things. a schedule for that either. I mean, I know that uh, here's the dates because uh, I am I am officially contracted to to announce the D1. So the NCAA is at least taking care of that with uh, another Virginia native, Brian Hazard, for those of you that know. But that's the only thing I know about it. So that's uh, I'm just curious if the coaches had heard anything that, uh, you know, because I'm not in that in that bubble. I know that uh, I've got to come in early for for uh, for testing. That's for sure. So I expect a lot of swabs up the nose for 330 athletes. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. I mean, I've heard a lot of stuff, and anything anything I would I could pass along would just be speculation. So, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we can't, I can't give any information on it because I, I I really don't know. And everything that I've heard has just been kind of hearsay. Nobody nobody really knows for sure uh, what it's going to look like, how it's going to play out, um, what the protocols are going to be. I, I can't imagine that. Uh, you know, I would be surprised. Let's put it that way. If there was a uh, significant amount of fans that were allowed um, in the arena. Ho- hopefully, the, hopefully we can get family members in there and and uh, the people that you know that are close to the athletes and the coaches uh, can get in there and watch watch their families and uh, their loved ones compete. Yeah, it'd be it'd be well if you know worst case scenario at least we can we can watch it online. But it's just still something. There's something about being there that is that is part of the the experience, not just for the athletes, but for Hokie Nation, which has done a great job at, you know, with your, your with your performance, hitting trophies, hitting the top 10. Now Hokie fans are in the lower bowl heckling me. So that tells you how far this program has gone from, you know, a sliver up in the third deck to now having a ample seating in the lower bowl. So hopefully we can get back to that and then Hokie Nation can be well represented at future NCAA championships. But like you said, we don't know what we don't, well, we don't know what we don't know. I think that's what, what you were basically getting at. But uh, lastly, any final thoughts as we head into, uh, I guess we had a two-week Two week training session, are we tapering, are we gearing up and and then waiting for waiting for March and the in the allocations and such. So uh what's next for you, Tony Roby? What's next for me? Um I'm gonna go get lunch when we get off this call. <laughs> we've got pool workout at one o'clock. We're gonna get in the pool. I'm not I'm not I'm not a strong swimmer, um, so I'm not I won't be in the pool. Um so and uh, we're going to get back to training and uh, we're going to focus on the process of uh, what goes into the next couple of weeks. And we're not going to get distracted and we're going to stay in our bubble and make sure that we are um, putting ourselves in a position to, to have the opportunity to do what we love to do and our guys love to do. And that's to, uh, compete at the ACC championships, compete at the NCAA championships, hopefully bring home some titles, um, you know, several titles and, and bring home some, some titles at the NCAAs as well. And uh, that's, that's what we're going to continue to focus on. And uh, we're not going to do any podcasts or anything like that until the NCAAs are over. How's that sound? Well, I, I've already reached out to some folks at Tech Sideline, so I'll probably put a show out there talking about hokey wrestling. But as far as you guys go, I'll just I'll just back up and leave you alone for a bit. I, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. We might jump on. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll play it by year. We'll play it by year. I appreciate you know I, I appreciate all our fans and uh, I, I, the support has been awesome this year. Um, I know we haven't been uh, putting stuff out there as much, and I probably haven't been as visible as I have been in the past. Um, you know, like I said, though, we've, we've really just tried to keep our head down and, and I've asked our guys to do that. And, you know, I think it's important that I do the same thing and focus on the team and, um, you know, and the results seem to be pretty good so far. So, 
Uh, that's that's what we're going to continue to do. But you know, we we, we definitely appreciate the, all the support, all the text messages, all the emails, everybody that's supporting us on social media. Um, you know, all of our donors uh, have been fantastic uh, over the course of the last couple couple months here supporting the program. We've got a lot of really exciting things going on right now with renovations of locker rooms with office spaces additions you know that we we've recently had in the training center so there's there's so many exciting things going on but our job is to make sure we win wrestling matches and and that's what we need to that's where we need to keep our uh keep our focus right now Hokey fans, listen to Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling anywhere you go by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, but also on your favorite podcatcher of choice through Stitcher, Spotify, Spreaker, and more. Everything you need to know and how to listen at InsideVirginiaTechWrestling.com. is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.